rewriting the um, application format for getting the funding um, last year, uh, you know, we, we, we dug up a lot of different things and we came across a lot of different things in our search. One thing that really caught my interest because of my, um, uh, my day job, uh, I'm a lecturer at the law school and I, uh, um, I lecture and research in uh, intellectual property law. Um, Michael's already spoken about uh, patents and patents that Arkwright took out. Uh, that did catch my attention when I was um, look, doing a bit of research to write the application. So um, it's just that part that I wanted to share with you. Uh, I've not really researched um, into anything particular, but um, I was quite intrigued by the information that I actually found. And um, uh, e even by the, the, the little that I, uh, uh, um, I came across, um, it became clear that uh, patenting strategy was quite uh, key to how Arkwright uh, amassed his wealth. Um, so right from obtaining uh, the patent to uh, licensing um, the, the rights out to, um, and to others who are willing to uh, work the patent and uh, to integrate that into a business model it seemed to be central to how Arkwright worked and being the father of the Industrial Revolution, of course, we are left with the legacy of that as well. So, I think it still remains with us. Um, just to give you a very brief um, idea about the debates that we have in intellectual <coughs> property law, um, um, it, it really uh, spans across the spectrum. One, on the one hand, there's uh, arguments for having very strong protection of patents. On the other hand, uh, there's very strong arguments for um, not having proprietary ownership over things that um, can be of such benefit to society. As we can see in this case, it brought about a revolution and, and we have uh, progressed in various ways. So with, that's the sort of background that um, I had. And uh, I'm going to be looking at India and the UK here. Um, India and the UK in the 21st century, um, as a society um, and our governments, are uh, promoting innovation as a key um, uh, factor in economic growth. And uh, part of the innovation is um, about protecting intellectual property. So I just wanted to look at these two examples, separated in time, uh, but certainly united in a keen sense of uh, um, invention and in a keen sense of uh, entrepreneurship um, and uh, both of these examples are picked here. Arkwright, um, you know who he is now, um, Arunachalam is an uh, entrepreneur from uh, uh, Tamil Nadu um, and in fact the region where he comes from is also one of the regions that grows uh, cotton not far from uh, Madras, that uh, Sasha mentioned. Um, in her talk. Um, both of them were inspired by cotton. Um, Arkwright uh, used cotton, as we've heard. Um, Arunachalam, his invention, um, which I'll talk to you in a bit, um, also used, um, also started off with uh, cotton, um, after which he moved on to uh, wood pulp. So, here you have Arkwright, who is an entrepreneur of the um, industrial era. We've already seen this machine before, the spinning frame. Um, as I understand it, this is his uh, first patent. Now, the spinning machine, um, we've had a lot of detail, but to sum it up, I suppose, um, they had rollers which produced yarn of the correct thickness and spindles which twisted them, resulting in strong thread. So that was what we didn't have before the uh, spinning frame, the spinning jenny, I think it was, um, didn't really produce a thread as strong as this. So this was what was uh, um, what, what gave Arkwright his advantage in the market, if you like. And he um, saw the pattern for this. Um, K and Heiss already been mentioned. Um, as I said, I you know haven't actually done um, you know proper research looking at proper sources, but the impression I got was um, uh, Kay and Heiss have uh, worked in collaboration uh, with each other, um, but at one point it looks like uh, perhaps Arkwright employed um, Kay. So, um, to sort of 
you know, put it technically, it looks like the uh, uh, patent that Arkra got was, you know, sort of an employee invention. So he was, uh, Arkra was the employer of um, K, and uh, therefore any invention uh, that 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 was uh, that happened in that context um, is, you know, belongs to the employer. So you know, Arkra ends up with being the um, uh, owner of the invention. Happened in '69, I think, 1769. He very successfully um, uh, had a licensing strategy, um, mills um, in, in, in Derbyshire, Staffordshire, Lancashire, uh, Scotland and elsewhere. A feature of that, I think he was very smart at uh, negotiating royalties, um, high royalties, so he did, um, if you like, milk his patent as much as he could. Um, <clears throat> but I think um, this was only part of the reason why he um, succeeded, because of course, um, his his business um, his business strategy of you know setting up the factory system and uh, all the welfare measures he took in order to increase productivity of course all came together as a complex but certainly the uh, the pattern did play a key role in in his success and and also in the success story of the industrial revolution um, which you know I think still sort of stays with us now the um, uh, his, his uh, spinning frame, his water frame, was very, very successful. A lot of people wanted to um, have it, um, but of course, you know, there was a price to pay for it. Um, so, um, in such inventions, there's always the danger that you can copy it, especially when the, um, when the machine is, um, um, is, is simple enough, as in, you know, if you're working with it, you'll be able to see what it is and take that knowledge and actually replicate that machine. So there was widespread copying as well. Um, so a lot of people were using, um, were using his machine, and there, there were infringement or infringements of his uh, patent because more people wanted to use it. One of the ways to do that is to perhaps challenge the uh, the patent. In which case, um, you know, there, there's a possibility that uh, they might come out successful. And I think in this case, the um, the patent was actually revoked. Um, so I think he probably had it for about uh, 10 years. Um, I don't have much detail, but it looks like it might have gone through a process of a few appeals, I think. So that's why the period between 1781 to 85. Um, so I, I think probably one court um, reinstated it, but uh, then when it f uh, went up to another higher court and appeal, it, um, it, it was again revoked. So finally, it was uh, revoked, the, the pattern on the spending frame. Um, and interestingly, um, the reason I found uh, was that it was um, was lack of novelty. Now that doesn't mean that it wasn't something new. It was new. I think the uh, water frame was a big technical advance over what was there previously. Um, you know, uh, uh, it's been shown to us um, how 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 uh, the water frame was you know a, a new invention. It was novel. Uh, but the point is, if it was already um, something that uh, other people had done, like here and Heiss had achieved, and um, if it was uh, their invention, essentially Arkwright, if he wanted to claim it, it was not novel anymore. So on a technicality, um, that machine, and it's attributed to Arkwright, it's not novel anymore. So that was perhaps, I think, how it would have fallen. I would be really interested in... Uh, uh, seeing if you know, looking at the judgments actually, and looking at um, uh, looking at what the reasons were actually were, because this is a very live debate even today um, about whether in the UK we um, we 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 are protecting uh, too much too soon, and therefore putting too much in uh, proprietary hands, because uh, the more patents there are, the more exclusivity there is in, uh, in inventions. So it's a very live debate. Um, it's happening now. Uh, another another machine that um, so with the spinning frame, I think the demand for more and more cotton sort of to go through that um, <coughs> and to go through the spinning frame and then come out as a final product increased. So the carding machine, which I understand to be something necessary to uh, uh, it's a stage before um, the cotton goes through the spinning frame. So. Um, uh, the increased demand um, that was caused because of the success of the spinning frame led to uh, this other machine which converts raw cotton buds to cotton fibers so that then it can be spun into uh, yarn. Arkwright, um, 
obtained a patent on this in uh, 1775, about four or five years after he um, patented his uh, water frame. <coughs> there was a cutting machine that uh, was invented by Paul Lewis in 1748. Um, it'll be quite interesting to see whether this machine was, um, to see whether this machine is only an incremental improvement over the previous invention, Paul Lewis invention, or whether this actually had an element of novelty in it. Um, I think that it, it, it is questionable. Um, I mean, the spinning frame was quite clearly a technical advance, but um, um, it doesn't seem like the carding machine was that much of uh, an advance. Anyway, this also, I understand, was revoked in um, uh, 1781. It's about the same time, I think, as the um, other one uh, was being litigated as well. So, yeah. He was, a, he was an inventor, held patents, and he, um, he lost them as well um, after about 10 years. But in that, in that time frame, in the meanwhile, he was able to um, explain the patent, uh, which is what every patent holder will do, and I think he did that really well. And it seems like um, quite a bit of his uh, fortune that I found a few websites having this quote of 500,000 Pounds at that time, I think it's some somewhere like thirty million pounds or something in uh, in your current money, um, attributed to um, his uh, his patent strategy. Okay, so that uh, the example of Richard Outcry I see as an entrepreneur in the industrial age. Looking at an example of a social entrepreneur in the twenty first century. Now what? What I don't want to do, or what I don't want to come across as doing, is that I'm setting up two personalities from two different countries, and essentially saying one is good, the other is bad, one is the good guy, the bad guy. No, what I'm trying to essentially see is how um, the, the, the innovation strategies are changing with periods in time. Okay? And I've just picked the two examples, you can do exactly the opposite examples. You can take a social entrepreneur uh, you know, in the industrial age, in, you know, in England, and we could do a, a, you know, a business entrepreneur or an economic entrepreneur in the 21st century in India. Fine. Um, but I've just, you know, I just happened to come across these examples, so I've just picked them up. Um, just this very interesting quote by this person, um, which I think is very interesting um, in today. Um, Why make money and then come to philanthropy? Um, adopt philanthropy right from the start. Um, then I read that. Then this is a quote from this guy, Murganandam. Um, Arunachalam. He happens to come from um, uh, Tamil Nadu, and um, I actually counted the letters in his spelling because my name is very long. And in fact, the number of letters in my first name and surname is exactly the same as his first name.